so good to have you sit and listen today because we yes. are jam-packed <laughs> with the Washington Report. Yes, God sent his ambassador, Ruth Schofield, to Washington years ago, and she's going to let us know what's going on. A real prayer warrior, so stay tuned. Now, she's been with us a lot, but today she's got overflowing information for That's us. That's right. And the McMillans are going to sing for us, and they're going to start with Bittersweet Water. I don't know how you get that, but bittersweet. Now when Israel had crossed the Red Sea, that God above will go back to save their lives. Well, they got thirsty out in the desert, came to Moses and began to cry. Bitter water, God showed Moses a tree there by his feet. He said, cast it into the water, and I will make your bitter water sweet. He makes the bitter water sweet, satisfies your every need. He'll quench your thirsty soul forevermore. When you drink this water, friend, you will never thirst again. My God can make your bitter water sweet. We thank the McMillans yes. for that yeah. great music. And now we have a real treat for us. <laughs> and she's finally come to Florida. Yeah. And uh, Ruth Schofield, who I've known for over 30 years, and it's a privilege to have you. Yes, Ruth. well, Thank it's an coming. honor to be here. I love you both. And uh, Bob, we just admire what you have done for over 30 years. Oh. You were the first television station my program ever aired on. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And you We've don't heard that more than once. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that program anymore. No. But tell us why. You've been stuck in Washington <laughs> all these years. 32 years and counting. Uh, the Lord sent me there. It was not on my bucket list. <laughs> it was farthest from my thoughts. Uh, I actually started television, and I was an evangelist in Florida, and I had a Bible teaching program on your station from my church in Lakeland. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, I went to Atlanta to expand, and I went on the CBN network. And actually, um, CBN helped me with getting production for the expanded program because it was Bible teaching and healing, and it was just flourishing, and we were still on your station. But uh, in deep prayer and, and traveling across the ocean to Africa and India and holding crusades, the Lord spoke to me in Africa 
I was saying, Lord, I just want to stay in Africa the rest of my ministry. The harvest is so ripe over there. And the Lord said, you daughter, I'm sending to the nations. And I thought expanded travel, you know, that's exciting. My son was in college. And anyhow, long story short, six months later, the Lord directed me to Washington, D.C., mm. which really is the capital of the world. Yes. You know, one day Jerusalem will be the capital of the world. But um, Washington, D.C. represents all the nations and been there 32 years. And the TV program expanded into what you would call political from a Christian uh, perspective. Right. And you have been involved in how many prayer groups? Oh my goodness, you <laughs> wow. know, that has expanded. That was one of the focuses of my uh, ministry in Florida and throughout the Southeast, uh, was to get people to pray, pray for our nation. The Lord had always given me a burden for our nation. And I would preach that everywhere I went as well as minister to people, pray for our nation. And when I'd be overseas, they'd say, we're praying for America because they could see us going on a down spiral um, morally. And that's where it began. You know, that's, that's yeah. where our trouble began was when God uh, became second nature to people and not number one. That's right. But uh, prayer groups expanded as I went to Washington. I interviewed all the Christian coalition leaders. Uh, that was what I gave the first two years of the program to, was to the church in Washington, D.C. Mm. And uh, had a lot of them on frequently so that they could uh, tell the people what was going on. And we began to raise awareness. And that's really what my mission has been. Uh, number one is soul winning. I mean, uh, as an evangelist, you should never lose your heart for souls. That's right. And that's, right. that's number one. And I believe in Washington, we are helping to protect the harvest. Mm, amen. Uh, the Lord showed me we were guardians of the harvest. A lot of people say it's guarding religious freedom, which is true. And our constitutional right, our First Amendment right. And we certainly have seen that come under fire. And, um, you know, Justice uh, Sam Alito just recently warned Cath uh, the Catholic legal group. He said, don't think that you're on safe ground having the right president and, and more members in Congress to protect your freedoms. They are going to come under fire with greater hostility. Mm -hmm. He just said, uh, spoke that in wow. March. Wow. And that's true. Yeah. We have certainly seen that. Yes. Well, you know, I'm sure a lot of people wonder why the spiritual battle, even though, you know, we placed the right godly, God-fearing president in, we voted for God-fearing members of Congress. I'm sure a lot of people wonder, well, why are we doing all this warfare right now? What's the battle? But the battle is the people that lost had a plan to take over our country. Yep. And they're not going to sit back and just let it all diminish. They'd like to tar and feather this president and impeach him. Yeah. Well, you talk about a deep state that exists. Uh, talk about what that yes, really means. Yes, you know, you hear that on the news a lot and you wonder, well, what is the deep state? The deep state is a part of a shadow government. Uh, there's a shadow government that is be, has been formed by all those that lost, those that would like to be in the White House, those that would like to be in charge of our money. Uh, but the deep state is through the uh, FBI and uh, uh, monitoring our people. Um, everywhere you go, you see these towers with a lot of uh, little dishes on them. Mm -hmm. And um, my son even told me when we were driving through Texas, I said, look at all these towers here. He said, yeah, half of them are monitoring your cell phone. They're monitoring us. Uh -huh. And uh, out in um, Nevada, there is the biggest uh, NSA uh, monitoring uh, setup that we've ever had. It's, it was built in the Obama administration. Mm. You know, I saw a picture and of it. And it has it records, yes. Us. You can look it up on the internet and you can see a picture of it. It's miles long. Mm. And uh, it's the biggest monitoring station in the country. It has data on every person in the United States, and they can use it against you at any time if they wish. Mm. But that's the deep state is monitoring. Uh, they monitor the people in our government that they don't like. I'm going to change my name. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have friends that actually bought a house in Italy. <laughs> but God wants to do something. He wants his harvest. Do you think that's why he's held back all this? Do you think maybe that's why England exited or want to yes, Brexit? absolutely. And that's so. why Donald Trump came in. Whether you like him or not, whether you voted for him or not, God voted in this exactly, election. Exactly, yeah. All because God loves you. He loves your neighbors. He loves your relatives. And he wants a great harvest. You are he? absolutely right. It's all about the harvest. You know, we were praying that in Washington. Those of us who really have an evangelistic heart, we pray that God will give this nation uh, and the church time to finish our mission. You know, the enemy wanted to cut off our mission and end it, but God said, no, he's going to be on his timetable. But you know, if we don't pray mm -hmm. and intercede and stand in the gap, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 says that the restrainer is here and the restrainer is the Holy Spirit in us. And until that Holy Spirit is uh, removed in us, when the church is lifted out, the Holy Spirit will not have the presence in the earth like it does now because the church is gone. You know, we are the temple and the Holy yes. Spirit lives in us. And uh, the restrainer uh, is um, all of God's people who have a heart to pray and be watchmen on the wall. And, and those are orders to gag and restrain the enemy. That's We're right. not to lay down and uh, become a smooth road for the enemy to run over. But uh, all of this was, uh, this prayer changed the time of the enemy. Yes, it And did. gave the church a new hour. And the Lord showed me that before the election, a year before uh, Trump even ran, just probably months before he announced he was running. But before the election got into full uh, swing, Holy Spirit told me that God was resetting the time and he was going to give the church more time. He has heard the hurt prayers of his people. So what do we do with this time? Have a good life and be happy? Mm -hmm. um, no, we're to run the race hard. And we are to pray. And yes. you've got some wonderful statistics. You know, I've yes. got these notes here about all those that are praying. Oh. I just want you to encourage our our viewers. Yeah, and in the tell government. us about all these congressmen that are vote that are are praying and all the prayer right. groups that God is raising up. Right, it's through the Congressional Prayer Caucus that was started 12 <clears throat> years ago by Congressman Randy Forbes, who is a statesman from Virginia, and uh, he has uh, appointed someone in the Senate. Uh, Oklahoma Senator James Lankford heads up the Congressional Prayer Caucus in the Senate. And uh, these men help um, raise up prayer uh, among the senators and the uh, representatives. And what they do is every week they pray as they begin their business, when the new session comes in every week, when they come back to work. And they pray about the business, but this has expanded to where they went out to every state to raise up uh, legis legislators in their own state. And they have now, after I think two years, they have 700 legislators in 31 states. And out of them, wow. they have formed 77. I think you said hmm. 7,000. Well, there are 7,700 prayer groups oh. they have raised up. Those wow. 700 legislators, it's an, a, a, a coincidence maybe that they have the number seven, but I don't know how they count it, but there's 700 legislators in 31 states that have raised up 7,700 prayer groups. And the focus of those prayer groups is to bring revival to our nation. Amen. Yeah. And yeah. we don't realize, you know, we get so caught up in politics Sorry. and we think, that's the reason so our politics can change. Yeah. That's not the reason. It's winning souls That's that everything. makes the difference. Right. And I, I just um, really thank uh, Rodney Howard Brown for going back to Washington. Mm -hmm. He's going to be there in a couple of weeks. July 4th, or, yeah. Yeah. That time frame. Yeah. He's going to be there for a week again. Yes. And he's going to be at the um, DA. Oh, oh, yeah, the Daughters of the Dawn. American Revolution, yeah. their building. 
Yeah, and what do they call it? Something else. DAR Convention Center, I think. Yeah. Yeah, or Congressional Convention Center. Yeah. But it's been there forever. Yeah. I've been in it many times yeah. for a lot of Christian groups. Pat Robertson has even used that building. Mm. Uh, you know, they rent it. Oh. But yes, it's a significant place historically. And they, they've got mm. people there now going That's through right. all the city. Yeah. And leading people to ahead the of Lord. time, right? Yes, we Praise know some God. people that are there right now. Yeah, they're walking the street, sharing the gospel. Right, and in October, I think it is. I'd have to verify that uh, there is Awakening Dawn coming to the mall, and it's from 50 states, and it's uh, mostly sponsored by the Call, Lou Engel. Yeah. But uh, yes. other many other ministries have joined that, and it's a really for prayer and worship. They're not going to have speakers. I'm so glad. <laughs> wow. They're going to have prayer oh, wow. and worship on the mall for three days. Mm. So uh, God is doing a lot. But you know, as well as the members of Congress praying, uh, there's prayer and Bible study in the White House right now. And that's been spearheaded by the vice president. Really? And uh, it's all cabinet members. Mm. Uh, it is just amazing. Betsy We've DeVos never had that. One of them. Several other. Jeff Sessions. Yes, mm -hmm. Jeff yeah. Sessions is a part of that. Betsy DeVos. Um, you know, just Ben Carson. Ben Carson. All of the major ones. Every every head of state. You yeah. know, you can see the all the cabinet members. Well, they've always had prayer and Bible study at times for the staffers, but not for the uh, cabinet members. So this is historical. Mm -hmm. And the president himself prays. We know that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've lost many of our religious freedoms. And a lot of people don't realize just what we've lost. Right. But uh, I know you had a meaning for what does, I'm asking you, what does religious freedom mean? Well, religious freedom is the freedom to practice whatever you believe. And you not, may not, be, you know, agree with what someone else believes, but it's the freedom to practice any religion. It's just not Christianity. Although our nation was founded on, uh, you know, uh, biblical values, and uh, our forefathers wrote the Constitution even uh, from themes out of the Bible. It doesn't have scripture in it, but the themes are there. Mm -hmm. And the Ten Commandments you can see in it. Um, so religious freedom is a First Amendment right. Amen. Yes, it is. But sometimes you wouldn't know that some of our colleges <laughs> and universities right now. Exactly. You know, we just heard about a young man that was uh, demoted as president of the class. Right. They said, you remind us of Donald Trump. Yes. I was shocked. I couldn't uh -huh. believe it. Yeah, and people are even being attacked if they mention that they support Donald Trump. Yeah. Yes, and you know, there, there have been atrocities uh, committed against people. But, you know, we need to be brave and bold and, and not be, you know, gagged. Right. We don't want to diminish and hide in a corner. Right. Let our light shine. That's right. We're going to take a break and uh, have some good music by the McMullins. Yes. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Terry Tripp's Empower Minute. To realize the value of a year, ask a student who just failed a grade. To realize the value of a month, ask a lady who just gave birth to a baby prematurely. To realize the value of a week, ask the person who lives week to week, paycheck to paycheck. To realize the value of a minute, ask me who has missed an airplane by one minute. To realize the value of a second, Ask the person who just avoided an accident. To realize the value of one hundredth of a second, ask the person who won the silver instead of the gold medal. Never underestimate the value of a day, of a month, of a year, of a minute, of a moment. Make today count. 
I want to encourage you to support this station financially. They are proclaiming God's Word every minute of every day of every year. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lie. If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, oh, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. And if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom for saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, my God, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the line of day in the dead of night, and we've all found. Worn out from the same old fire, and we've all run to things we know just ain't right. Oh, but there's a better life. There's a better life if you've got pain. Oh, he's a pain taker, and if you feel lost, he's a way. Saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe. Receive it if you can feel it. Somebody testify if you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it. Somebody testify if you got pain. He's a pain taker, and if you feel lost, he's a way. Shaking Savior, if you've got chains, He's a chain breaker. If you need freedom for saving, He's a prison shaking Savior. If you've got chains, my God, He's a chain breaker. Well, we're about to embark on one of the most crucial things we've ever embarked on and pray about. Now, we haven't, in our prayer time, we haven't really prayed a lot about this, but the judges in Washington, D.C. Absolutely. And there is like 179 total judges uh, and so many are unfulfilled even the, their positions and what must we pray? We really need to have everyone pray that President Trump will have the opportunity to put many uh, hundreds of judges in place. Now these are federal judges uh, the Supreme Court handles about 1% of all the cases that w come before them, or not come before them, but th of all the federal cases, there are 35,000 that the federal judges handle. And the Supreme Court handles 1% of the whole nation. 
Mm. So the federal courts dictate to what happens in the United States for the people. And that's why we've seen religious freedom uh, just being chipped away and on the chopping block. And Jay Sekulow wrote a wonderful book uh, about two years ago on how the federal courts are uh, dictating to our country and that it doesn't matter who's in the White House, who's in Congress, the federal courts, these uh, circuits that you hear about, there are nine circuits across the nation, and the Ninth Circuit is way out west, and that's the most liberal, it includes Absolutely. Hawaii. And that's the one that first shot down and stopped uh, what they call Trump's travel ban. Now, it's not a travel ban, yet it is. It's, it, you know, if you say travel ban, they go, oh, you can't let women and children and kids in and families, people be separated. That's not what it's about. There are seven, seven terrorist nations in the Middle East that they wanted to hold back for 90 days until they could restructure how to vet them better not to let these terrorists in our country or we will be like uh, Britain and France uh, and the other countries, but Britain and France are suffering more with terrorism than any other countries. We'll have it here if we don't uh, revise our immigration standards. We've just opened the floodgates for eight years and um, you know, they'll come in. So th uh, the federal judges are, are most important. And maybe I can read a couple of uh, the statistics here. Uh, at the moment, Trump can appoint 129. Those are vacancies that come up either re with retirement or death. They're in there for life. Mm. And uh, 179 are the biggest. Uh, those are the 20 US courts of appeals. They call them uh, circuit courts. And then there's 677, which is uh, total judges in district courts. And then 16 for federal claims and nine for total uh, judges in inter international courts. So it's kind of split up. But right now the president has on his desk 129 openings. Now that's a good beginning. Yes. <laughs> but and Judge we, Neil Gorsuch is a a great yes, beginning that now. was a beginning of, uh, that was his first opportunity. And it, it does look like he will have another opportunity with some Supreme Court uh, justice, either with retirement or death. Yeah, well, uh, we Ruth have, Ginsburg is getting up there in age. And yeah, and she's had cancer and she's very frail, but she, I don't count on her retiring. <laughs> Well, she um, wants to keep her vote. Yes, exactly. And I guess if I was her in her shoes, I would do the same thing. But she's extremely liberal. Yeah. And, uh, of course, we lost Scalia, who was a champion. But they say that uh, Justice Gorsuch should be like Scalia. We hope and yes. pray. Yes. But uh, uh, the president may have two or three other Supreme Court justices uh, to a point. Uh, throughout his four years uh, and maybe eight years, we would hope. But, you know, there, it's, it's a restoration of our nation to bring back the pendulum. You know, from the days of John Kennedy, um, our nation has slid completely. Oh. Um, it hasn't stopped. Yeah. Even with Ronald Reagan, it, it slowed it down. And right now, you know, John 9, 4, John chapter 9, 4 says, work while it's daylight because the hour comes when it's dark. And we don't want to take anything for granted. We cannot go back to sleep, get in our lazy boy chair, uh, or float in the pool. And, and I mean, you can do that on occasion to refresh yourself, but don't live there. You know, people say to me, have you thought of retirement? And I said, what is that word? You know, it's like, I want to die with my boots on. I'm going to keep going Amen. until, uh, you know, there's no more uh, time for me to work. Yeah. Well, you know, God has a lot to say in His Word about unjust judges, a lot. And, you know, they're going to have to give an account to the Lord. But, you yes. know, He's about to judge Israel. And He said, Your princes are like roaring lions. Your judges are like ravening wolves. They gnaw the bones. Your prophets are light and treacherous. Your priests have polluted the sanctuary. I mean, he goes on and on and on. Yes, uh, yeah, you can about do the a study on that word. Land. 
And then there's Proverbs 29, 2. Uh, you know that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but yeah. when the uh, wicked uh, rule, the people groan. Yes. And we can have the right president, we can have the right members of Congress, but with these judges, they will dictate what policy they want to right. us. Yeah. And we've seen that firsthand, haven't we? Yeah. So that leads to, we've got to pray. Exactly. We've got to pray individually. We've got to pray corporately. You know, I bet some of you go to a church and there's an intercessory prayer group. I know our church has one uh, an hour before the church starts and uh, or the, uh, and, the and I, starts and yeah. we go to it. I mean, I it's mean a, it is amazing. God is person. raising them up and, and you need to join in. Um, you know, if you say, what can I do it? Find out where there's a prayer group. I spoke to 40 intercessors yesterday, watchmen on the wall, I call them, because, uh, you know, they just needed to have some insight on how to pray better and they were hungry for it. And uh, it was a powerful time together with all the camaraderie and the Holy yeah. Spirit. We felt the fire come down even. Praise God. Right. Well, the Bible says, want to put a thousand to flight? Just two. We'll put ten thousand to flight. And then it But we've goes got on. to know our yeah, authority. Exactly. Friend, if you don't know your authority, if you are a blood bought, born again believer and the Spirit of God is on the inside of you, you have authority that the enemy doesn't want you to know you have. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. And you know what? If people would uh, continue to pray and increase prayer and be genuine about it, we would see a move of God. Uh, Justice Alito, in his, um, I mentioned that he said the uh, battle against religious freedom would increase. He also said the bottom line that the solution is evangelize your fellow neighbors. Evangelize mm -hmm. those in your circles. And it's only, our nation will only change when we see people have a heart change and a mind change. Yeah. You can't talk someone out of abortion if they want to have abortion. I mean, some people do change their mind, but some people you just can't hit them uh, and change their thinking. But the Holy Spirit can do that. And by witnessing to them is where the change comes. Amen. That's right. And the righteous are bold as a lion. <clears throat> yes. The Holy Spirit is so gentle with people, yes. much gentler than we can be, <laughs> <laughs> though we can introduce them to the Holy Spirit, but he has to do the work in their lives. And we just, if we don't pray for anything else, we need to pray for the judges yeah. in this country, in the Supreme Court, and continue to pray for the Supreme Court. Especially that Ninth Circuit. <laughs> you know, years ago, yeah. I went to a God Call to Intercessory Prayer Group in Washington, D.C. This is before we even met. Uh, Cindy Jacobs was told by the Lord, bring intercessors here to Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. She came with a gavel. He told her what to do. It was amazing. It's one of the most amazing trips I have ever made in my life just because of all the miracle-like things I saw and yes. experienced. Yes. But I tell you, God just spoke about some things and it was done. Yes. And he said, and so that you may know, I call this meeting, you're going to see a 100-year-old tree fall to the ground. And when I couldn't wait to see the news. When I got back home to Montgomery, I actually saw on the news that they had a torrential rain like they'd never had. They blocked off streets. They never blocked off and a 100-year-old tree fell. In D.C.? But she said, we yeah. need to specifically pray mm -hmm. about that Ninth Circuit Court. Yes. So let's, yes. let's pray because God answers prayer. Oh, yeah. And he honors his word. Yeah. So how powerful is the word of God when we pray it? Well, the word of God, of course, you know, uh, is more powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword and it Can't divides measure. asunder. Yes. <laughs> Can't measure the That's power. Right. Yes, there. yes, absolutely. We, we pray the word of God in Washington, D.C. We speak yeah. it out and declare it. Yeah. God's word does not come back void. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And sometimes, God, when you get along with the Lord, just you and Jesus, you get along with him. Lord, what's on your heart? I know my son just does it more and more and more, and God is speaking to him more and more and more. And just recently, he said, he, I'm not going to say what he said or who he said to pray for, but it was a certain state where God really wanted to move. He said, pray for this state. 
And then I thought, now why did he call me? Because we had just talked the day before and he said, and the Lord told me to call two people to pray about this and mama, you were one of them. Hmm. So I took it to heart. I mean, we <laughs> talked again and I said, let me tell you, I started. And one thing you can do, if you don't know how to pray, See, I didn't know how to pray, but thank God for the oh, Holy yes, Spirit. Yes. I prayed in the Spirit. I prayed in tongues right. for quite a while. Yes. Because I thought if my God wants to move in that state, do some awesome things and bring about a great harvest, I want to be a part of it, don't yes, you? Yes, yes. I want to be right in the middle of what my Lord is doing. Well, you know, people don't come to the realization that the Bible tells us we are to bear fruit. We are not here just to live a good life and be good Christians. We have to bear fruit because Jesus said the trees that don't bear fruit will be cut down. Amen. And uh, you know, we need to understand that we need to present fruit to the Lord. And uh, yes. there, there will actually be crowns given for uh, your good works, your fruit. You know, we're kind of taught not to depend on good works, but on the other hand, we're supposed to do good well, works. Well, James said. Yes, right. So people need to realize that they need to be fruitful and productive in their spiritual life so that when you get to heaven, you won't be bankrupt. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I know some get to heaven by the skin of their teeth, but at least they're in heaven. Well, I would be grateful, yeah, you I know. I would too. I would too. They're barely but safe. But there, there is a vision beyond that, and the Word of God is full of it. You know, I have two teaching books, third one coming out, that, that cover that. Uh, you know, they're on our website if people want to go to our website. We have prayer on our website. Uh, we have guidelines for prayer and we tell them about what's going on in Washington with the legislators praying. But uh, I have two teaching books that not only admonish you to understand the Holy Spirit and the Word and the blood is the third one coming out, but um, they t encourage a believer, you know, to be productive in their uh, spiritual walk. Yeah. So it, I believe if you don't pray for your nation and pray for Israel, that you're accountable to the Lord. Mm. Amen. What is the name of your website? Uh, it's Washington, uh, D.C., uh, The Washington Report. If you look that up, but it's uh, WASHDCReport.com. Okay. Yeah. So go to that and you'll get continuous good reports. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there are different kinds of prayer, too. There is Cindy Jacobs. I forgot. I've got a book. I forgot the name of it. But I've had it for years, and it's just different kinds of prayer, you know, or what. There are even prophetic actions, and I know many said they have seen, God allowed them to see in the spirit realm what happened when in worship and praise they clapped their hands, everyone in that intercessor's room clapping their hands in praise and worship. They said it's like the second heaven goes crazy. Yeah. So well, and, a and, lot we can and do. you know, also people um, that pray need to understand the magnitude of where they're praying. You can be in your prayer closet, but your prayers place you in the heavenlies, in the courtyard of God, the courtroom of God. Yeah. And that's where you plead for the nations. You plead for your son or daughter. Uh, you plead for uh, whatever it is, but it, it takes a little work to get to um the courtroom of God, you know, uh, it's like the Supreme Court. The Lord showed me one time when I was praying in the Supreme Court, he said, this is like it is in my courtyard in heaven. Wow. Mm. There was the outer court and then there was beyond the uh, doors, there was the great courtroom where the justices meet. And the Lord said, that's the inner courtroom. And he showed me that. Amen. Yes. So we need to understand the legality and the importance of where we're praying. Wow. Yes. We're going to have some more music, take a little break, and when we come back, we're going to put our prayers to work. We're going to pray for all these things we've been talking about, and it's up to you. If you don't want to pray, you don't have to pray, but I feel sorry <laughs> if you don't. I really do. It is a privilege to pray, and we pray all the time, truthfully, um, night and day, and we are going to encourage you to stop what you're doing and pray with us. 
when we come back after the McMullins. Hi, I'm Brooke Larson, one of the many people that work here at CTN behind the scenes. Each day we come together to bring you Christian programming and testimonies that help you on your Christian walk. Programs that speak life, truth, healing, and change. We believe that God so loved this world that he gave his only son and that anyone that believes in his son, Jesus Christ, would not perish but have eternal life. That's why we're here today to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ across the airwaves and into your homes so that you and your family can find that same love that will set you free. Please consider partnering with us today and help us spread the gospel to every home. If each of us takes part and unites together in prayer and support, we can help change lives, communities, and nations. It's time for We the People. And this We the People is a very informative part of the program. Before we pray, we're going to listen to what Rob has to say about this week's edition of We the People. Revival created America. That's a bold statement, but let me point out the facts and then you can decide for yourself. 
Joseph Galloway, former speaker of the Pennsylvania Assembly and a close friend of Benjamin Franklin, said that the revolution was a religious quarrel caused by the Presbyterian and Congregationalists. Let's go back a little further and explain. In the 1740s, America didn't look much different than it might today, at least morally speaking. That's when the country experienced a great spiritual awakening. Listen to this account from Jonathan Edwards and see how similar it might sound to where much of our country is today. This is from 1743, quote, Just after my grandfather's death, it seemed to be a time of extraordinary dullness in religion. Licentiousness for some years greatly prevailed among the youth of the town. There were many of them very much addicted to night walking and frequently the tavern and lewd practices wherein some, by their example, exceedingly corrupted others. Later in this quote, he talks about how families have failed. That's a recount of the moral decline of the country. Then a spiritual revival hit, and here's the result. Quote, but in two or three years after, there began to be a sensible amendment of these evils. The young people by degrees left off their frolicking and grew observably more decent in their attendance on the public worship. And there were more that manifested a religious concern than there used to be. But a sermon was now preached on the Sabbath before the lecture to show the evil tendency of the practice and to persuade them to reform it. The young people declared themselves convinced by what they had heard from the pulpit and were willing of themselves to comply with the counsel that had been given. And it was immediately and I suppose almost universally complied with. And there was a thorough reformation of these disorders thenceforward, which has continued ever since. A great and earnest concern about the great things of religion and the eternal world became universal in all parts of the town and among persons of all ages. All other talk but about spiritual and eternal things was soon thrown by. The minds of people were wonderfully taken off from the world. It was treated amongst us as a thing of very little consequence. The concerns and conversations of the people turned away from the things of the world and were replaced with conversations about spiritual and eternal things. This revival changed America, especially in the young who grew up and 30 years later declared independence. As Benjamin Franklin's friend said, the revolution was largely a religious quarrel. Once the colonies experienced spiritual freedom, they no longer wanted to report to a tyrannical king. Their spiritual freedom opened their eyes to liberty because the scripture tells us that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. They had built him an altar, but no fire came. For Baal did not hear when they called on his name. But at Elijah's command, they poured water around. It spilled over the altar and onto the ground. With one humble prayer to Jehovah on high, the altar burned up and the ground was made dry. That same God. Who sends down heavenly fire Makes the lame man to walk And turns water to wine That same God Who makes blind eyes to see Heals their fears And he sanctified me He spoke and a dead man Walked out of the tomb And that same God is here in this room So discouraged, your strength is all gone. Keep hope and remember whose side that you're on. Just like he delivered Elijah that day, he'll deliver you too if you trust him and pray. That same God who sends down heavenly fire makes the lame man to walk and turns water to wine. That same God who makes blind eyes to see heals their fears and he sanctified me he spoke and a dead man walked out of the tomb and that same god is here in this room that same god who sends down heavenly fire makes the lame man to walk and turns water to wine that same god who makes blind eyes to see heals their fears 
terrified he He spoke and a dead man walked out of the tomb And that same God is here in this room He spoke and a dead man walked out of the tomb Thank you, McMillans. And Wonderful music. Right now, we're going to pray and ask God to intervene. Now, we're doing it, and there are people all over this country doing it at the same time. So why don't you pray with us? Maybe you've never prayed. You've just watched TV. But why don't you pray with us? And God will stir something in you. Amen. Now, what are we going to talk about first? Well, we're going to pray for the judges. Yes. Really, the seven mountains of culture. You want to start us out? Yes. Um, Father, we just pray now for righteous yes. judges to be raised up, that President Trump can appoint righteous judges. And what we mean by that, in Isaiah 11, 2 and 3, we just pray that they have the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, the understanding, the courage, the might, and all of the sevenfold spirit operating in their lives. Lord, they might not be Bible thumping judges, but they can have the fear of the Lord. And that's one of the sevenfold spirits is the fear of the Lord. And that God can uh, move through the hearts and minds of these judges. Federal judges, Lord, we need several hundred to go in. And we agree together in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray your favor. We ask you to give those that you appoint. We ask you to tap them, speak to them, give dreams and visions, and bring forth righteous judges. And Father, there may be some, they're, they're open to the truth. You said the king's heart is in your hand, and you can turn that heart any way you like. So we ask you for a divine visitation and turn hearts. And we pray for the seven mountains of culture. We pray for those that are media moguls, Father, that are not in your will. We ask you to turn them, Lord, or, and if they won't turn, if they won't repent, remove them, Father. We pray for, for uh, regents of universities, professors, even tenured professors, Father, and college professors, high school teachers, junior high teachers, grammar school teachers. Father, we ask you to do a work in our education system that only you can do. We ask you to bring forth the righteous in Jesus' amen, name. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 And Ruth, I'd like to ask you to lead people to the Lord. Now, there are many of you, I know you're just watching TV, but this may be the time the Lord is speaking to you to come unto Him. Yes. Would you? Amen. Lead? And you know, not just for those that need the Lord, maybe for the first time, but Christians yes. need to be trimming their lamps. Refine. The wise virgins. Jesus spoke that in the end days it would be like the times of uh, Noah and Lot. And we just uh, pray that you will rededicate your life to the Lord, that those of you who need to receive Christ as Lord and Savior can do it right now with a quick prayer and just say, Jesus, come into my heart. I give my heart to you. Thank you so much. And now the McMullins are going to close out the program today.
when the mountains and rivers were not yet in place just the thought of me brought a smile to his face from the time before there was time that's how long he's loved This world were laid he knew me. And before there was a garden, a cross, or a grave, he saw me. And when the earth was in darkness and there was no he saw my condition and he heard my cries from the moment before there were moments that's how long That's how long 